China. Once the dragon of the east, now weakened by internal strife and faces an existential threat. The decisive battle of Okinawa sealed their fate. The Chinese emperor faces a grim choice. His empire's survival hangs in the balance. In a secret meeting aboard a captured Chinese flagship, he bowed before the true emperor, whispering, his voice trembling, I will work towards Japanese victory. Given enough time, any man may master the physical. With enough knowledge, any man may become wise. It is a true warrior who can master both. And so the once mighty emperor became a marionette, pulling the strings to ensure Japan's ascendancy. His courtiers, sworn to secrecy, followed suit. The forbidden city echoed with the whispers of betrayal while the scent of cherry blossoms carried the news of capitulation. From his seat, the puppet emperor signed treaties, ceded territories, resources and sovereignty. The once proud dragon now bowed to the rising sun, and Japan's sphere of influence expanded. The puppet emperor, burdened by his betrayal, gazed out from his gilded cage. His life was spared, but now his soul lost. Arrogant and brutal, and it's time to bury him. I do not need his death, only his obedience. If we bury him, we won't need his obedience. Wars are not won on the battlefield alone, my son, but in the hearts and souls of our adversaries. As peace was brokered, Mongolia was ceded to Japan and the fleet was demilitarized. I want their hearts and souls, Commander. The Crown Prince Katsu was unimpressed with this deal, but unfortunately he's also the supreme commander of the Imperial Japanese Army. And so we don't have much say, and him being a Crown Prince, that makes things difficult in court. There has been a swath of Westerners arrive in Tokyo, all vying to speak with the Emperor or seek his audience, which is curious. It can only mean that the Western powers are taking notice. We've come to the dockyard and redesigned a new battleship based off the design of our previous battleship, but she's 50% larger now that we've upgraded the dockyard. We've added more casemate guns, same main armament, but I feel like she would be more capable with better armor. This really is just a stopgap until I can get access to a ship class that I like. These battleships are quite bulky and they aren't very useful but we have spending a lot on technology and it's only a matter of time. Technology will help us win this war. We must remember, technology alone will not vanquish our enemies. It will be our courage, our honor, and our self-sacrifice. Despite having the Chinese Emperor as our puppet, we can't give up the pretenses of the fight. Although, for all intents and purposes, the war is over, we just have to take the territory. This is the only Chinese fleet. It's been a few years since our last fight. We went to war within a few... Within a few years, once I could get the reputation bad enough again. Thanks to Prince Katsu, we were able to push that agenda to keep the fight happening. And we're going to take the land. We just have to destroy this one major Chinese fleet. And then we're going to start the land operations. They won't have anything left after that. With the last peace deal, we took all of their ships just to have a look at them and see what their designs were like. And they were horrendous. <laughs> horrendous looking ships. But no doubt once we fight an actual naval power, we will actually have a fight on our hands. We've got the torpedo boats doing their thing. Kozakura running too close to this cruiser. She's taken a torpedo to the port side. Her fate is sealed, but perhaps we can ram this torpedo boat. We're losing propulsion. The other torpedo boats have laid waste to the battleship. Easy stuff. We still have the very short range torpedo. We prioritize torpedo research just so we could be have the edge in that department for a short time. But it does affect the rest of your research line. So I've only done that to speed up a couple of turns worth of research to get those torpedo mods closer. 
The torpedo boat Sagi is in a little bit of trouble, turning hard to starboard, trying to dodge this torpedo, but we don't have a lot of maneuverability. Not very well designed boats, but they only have one mission and they are expendable. Chasing down light cruisers from stern is a bad way to fight them. But we have done some damage on that side of the fleet as well. We have a whole line of battleships and a whole line of light cruisers following up this formation. So we're going to do what we did in the last battle. Do as much damage as we can with our torpedo boats and then maneuver in for the kill. Keeping our capital ships out of the fight for the majority. The light cruiser here turning hard to port. Can she weave through the center? Nope, she's straightening her line. She's going to take two torpedoes here. Amidships under the stacks. Yes, we have two contacts. But the follow-up screening torpedo boat is going to finish off her aggressor, the Suma. Not much we can do about that until we start screening out the light fleet elements, but that's not my method at the moment. 37 men giving their lives on every attack. We've split the fleet. Some light cruisers here are separated from the main element. We still have a few torpedo boats left. We have quite a large battle line following up. Fushima's going to have her turn. Going to... Oh, will she? No, we're not going to launch on this guy. He's sinking already. He's taken massive hits from a 12-inch gun. And he's sinking. No need to waste a fish on that one. Let's have a look over here. What have we got? We've got Yayama. Chasing down a, a heavy cruiser. And that is the last of our torpedo boats. And we are trying to encircle the main fleet. With the light cruisers on the left side. Battle cruisers and their heavy cruiser support element there as well. So this was a much more balanced fleet engagement. But we decided to be dastardly anyway. It looks like we've had one torpedo blow up as it entered the water. And one is running very wide. It looks like the heavy will be able to turn through and weave through the center. Oh, that's unfortunate. Also being bracketed by a large caliber fire. We need to be careful of these torpedo boats. I think they have discharged their fish as well. So Yeyama may make it out. We've got Fushimi. Oh, Yeyama's tried to dump fish and she's had two duds explode just off the starboard. We've got one away. Running true. Torpedo boat looks like they're going to take evasive action. Fushimi is running up the stern of this heavy cruiser. I don't like her chances. She's dropped a stern fish. We need to evade that. Trying to wiggle around it. Now we'll try and come around the port side of this ship. She's turning hard to port herself. We have one fish away, but I don't think she will contact. Hard to see that there. And it's missed. And detonated off the starboard side. And we've had contact, but only light damage. But here we've got a rogue fish coming in from the starboard side of the heavy cruiser. Slamming underneath the stack. And that looks like it came from a, a friendly torpedo boat. Friendly fire. Doing our job for us. Fushimi. Getting some unexpected benefits from that attack. Yayama is being pursued by a torpedo boat, but she's running at 25 knots. Should be faster than the enemy boats. Making sure to keep the battleships away from that line of torpedo boats. Our light cruisers have managed to sink one of the light cruisers escaping the combat zone. The Niyodo class light cruiser is a 5 inch armed light cruiser. As many barrels as I could fit on it. Yayama looks like she may escape. Fushimi as well. Got good paths of attack. We still have more fish on board. I might turn her around for another go. The 
heavy cruiser is sinking pretty badly. The enemy have lost a torpedo boat. And the cruiser has sunk. So we have destroyed a fair amount of their fleet. 45 hits in that attack. 33,000 damage. And now we just have to run down the stragglers. The Neoto class light cruisers firing lots of 5 inch shells. But not making many contacts. All of our crews are cadets. We have neglected to spend money on training. Because we are prioritizing getting the transport uh, system up to maximum. Which I think is 200% as well as just pumping out the research where we can. The last peace deal let us buy this fleet. We were given a lot of money. And Mongolia. So we have a nice launch pad for a land invasion into China through Mongolia, which was a rebel, re rebelling nation for China at the time. So they were happy to part with it. Capital ships are nice and safe from our torpedo boats. Looks like there are only three left. We have two left on the field. Fushimi seems to be running very slow for whatever reason. I have her almost at max speed. She's lost a lot of momentum. Our, f our ships have good efficiency, so it shouldn't be the stack. She's dropped fish at this torpedo boat. Bow on is not really going to have much chance of hitting. They only have to make a slight course adjustment. Will they make that adjustment? Who knows? Doesn't look like it. Nope, they've taken the hit. But Fushimi is just stalling. Turned her up to full acceleration. Can she get away from this fish? Yep, she's crossed its track. Well, we can get away. We still have these two torpedo boats to worry about. Fushimi's feeling lucky. She's going to chase down the heavy cruisers. She's almost reloaded two of her torpedo tubes. Yayama should go and assist that attack. And we've sunk that other light cruiser hiding in the smoke. The overwhelming firepower from all of those light cruisers would have been too much to bear. Despite their poor accuracy. So now we just really need to chase down those heavies. Shimi's taken hits and hit to the engine room. She's in big trouble. Nowhere near able to launch her fish, which are almost reloaded. That is unfortunate. We don't... Oh, just turning enough to... So those shots grazed the bow, but not making contact. But it looks like we're in some trouble here, Fushimi. We may have to avenge you. While they're shooting at her, they're not paying any attention to the Yeyama. Now, a stern chase in a torpedo boat is very, very dangerous. But if Fushimi can hold on, no. Sinking with all hands. And now those cruisers will turn their attention to Yeyama, but maybe she can close that distance. Low probability attack, but we're going to push that. We'll get the rest of the team on a pursuit course. Get the light cruisers to screen out these torpedo boats that remain. Yayama, can you do it? I don't know if you can, but we're going to try. And so that's... Oh, yeah, I just would love for two kilometers on my torpedoes. It's the optimal attack range keep you alive but long enough for them to not or short enough for them not to be able to adjust course too much before it slams home 
light cruiser division on the chase. Need to make sure they don't cross the battleship line. Yeah, Yamas making contact with her four inch guns, but she's taken one through the stern. And we have catastrophic flooding on board. Can she turn in time to launch the fish? One last effort to take down her foe. She's yet to score a kill. Fish away, running at two different angles. Hopefully, we can make contact. One grazing the side of the heavy. Can we get another contact here? No, the rudder is too strong. And Yayama's last effort was futile. Torpedo boats are running away. And we will set a course to pursue the heavies. Now, light cruisers aren't the fastest things in the world, but they're fast enough. We are taking some damage on the lead ship. And they really couldn't hit the broadside of a bar running at that speed. Nowhere near their cruise speed. And they are fresh-faced crit uh, cadets. They've just come out of the Naval Academy. But this cruise is in trouble. She shouldn't take too many more contacts. The lead ship had to turn away. Five minutes have passed. We're still struggling to make any contact. But it should be enough. We've got some flooding happening. Again, the lead ship's taken damage. Let's turn the line so they get more broadside. More guns on. Looks like the battleships will be the one to finish the job. Last heavy's down. The Chinese literally don't have a fleet left after this fight. So now it's time to quickly blockade before they can start construction. Do you have our mechanized vehicles ready for deployment? Yes, father. Everything is set. Very well. Right, we have six battleships building just so we can use their displacement. And we're going to take the easiest ports first, which is Formosa. Mission complete. Uh, we're going to try and take Hong Kong, but I think it might be too damn strong. Uh, we've got the ships building. We have, like I said, six battleships building. It's going to take four months until we get the first batch out. Shanghai and Hangzhou are very large ports, which require all of our attention. The whole fleet is here. All the boys going to Shanghai. This one took two invasions because we failed the first time. But now it's ours. We have two large ports in eastern China. They built a single fleet of heavies, two ships, which will be no issue. They are giving our guys much needed gunnery practice though. It's taken a while to shoot them down despite our close range. We need to work on training. We've taken Wei Huawei, so that'll give us a good leverage into northern China, while the Crown Prince Katsu and his land forces push into central China, trying to link up and create a land bridge to Mongolia. That would be great. Oh, I've got to give it to them. They fielded a single battleship. And you know what? Now it's exploding. A glorious end to the Chinese Navy. The dragon let out a triumphant roar. And then there was silence. The invasion of Port Arthur is commenced. We have four battleships under construction. That'll bring us to a total of 20, with the aims to have five battle battleship divisions of four ships and their supporting sh uh, fleet. We just have to crack that nut. It won't be easy. A few more end turns before we see any more fighting, it seems. Bringing up this battleship division to assist the invasion of Port Arthur. We've unlocked a bunch of new technologies. It's giving us a few new hulls. So in the next few years, I'm going to start a new redesign process and see what we can build with the new technology we've uncovered in the last decade. The flag of China has changed for the third time. They are now the Republic of China. And it seems that they will soon crumble. We just need to get in there. I wonder how that uh, land invasion is going. It's been so many turns. Two years later, 
Crown Prince Katsu has cracked central China, so the Imperial Japanese army is doing its job. And now they're moving into northern China to try and link up with our province of Mongolia. And now they want peace yet again. This time they're offering us two billion dollars. That's a lot of dollars. We'll take Hong Kong. We've been, we tried to crack Hong Kong, I just couldn't get in there. Wouldn't, wasn't successful, we didn't have enough, couldn't spread the fleet enough to crack those naval invasions. We had to concentrate it one at a time. And we've come away with $764 million, as well as the province of Hong Kong. What concerns me is now the French are at war with the last remaining province of China that has access to the ocean. So let's see what happens there. My son, I am proud of you. Thank you, Father. You have restored the inevitability of our destiny. Actually, Father, I believe that we have made our own destiny. Perhaps the truth lies somewhere in between. It really does amaze me how a father and son can be of so different temperament, but yet still want the same thing. And China has collapsed. The French invading the last province and the government ceasing to exist. Our army will move to take the ungoverned areas, I hope. And I think it's time to look to the horizon. Perhaps we should start an island hopping campaign. I don't really have a plan at this moment. Oh, someone sounded the battle station alarm. The enemy slipped through. Naval forces on its way to Tokyo. The only thing between them and our homeland is a single floating island fortress. Sweep all enemy forces from the South Pacific. Well, you heard the man. We have our orders. Report back here. First light. And we will get back to the mission at hand. Time to clean the South Pacific. Commander Tyrael, out.